A lot of people have asked me how I got those GameCube BIOS corruptions, and today I'm going to show you. The answer is, with a lot of trial and error. So the first thing you're going to do is get the Windows Glitch Harvester and get the Dolphin, the Dolphin, or just Dolphin, and make sure, if you go into config, that you have this DSP LLE recompiler checked. If you don't have this activated, it, you do need a particular file to use it, so I'm not going to provide that because it's illegal. Next thing, go to interface, make sure you turn all of this off because most of this just gets in the way when you're trying to corrupt. Go to GameCube, make sure skip BIOS is unchecked. If this is grayed out, it means you don't have a BIOS in the right folder. I'm not going to show you where the folder is or how to get to it or how to obtain the BIOS. This is all on you. This is purely me showing you the corrupting part of it. Next step, to get the BIOS to run correctly, you're also going to need to go to graphics, hacks, and make sure this here is unchecked. If this is checked, you will run into a graphical bug. Not the good kind. Now, we're going to head over to the Windows Glitch Harvester. You need to make sure the BIOS is selected in your file. Because this is the file we're going to be corrupting. You can see here the directory of where the BIOS file is. So what we're going to do is we're going to restore backup because I was corrupting this earlier and it's now restored a fresh backup of that file. Whenever you use the Windows Glitch Harvester, it makes fresh backups of the file you're corrupting, so you can always retrieve it in case something goes wrong. So as far as our intensity and starting address goes, we're going to go for 34, because I feel like it's a good base starting point, and we're going to start at about 11,000, I think. We're going to ignore Blast Range, and we're going to ignore Corruption Engine for now, because you can't change it. Blast Type is going to be Random. And when we're ready, we're going to press Blast the Target. And there we go, once you see this number, it's been blasted. So we're going to launch a game inside Dolphin that runs on GameCube, corresponding to the region of BIOS I corrupted, which was USA. So we're going to launch Luigi's Mansion. And we're going to see if we get any results. Oh boy. And there you go, guys. That's how it's done. It all comes around to finding the right point to corrupt. So let's see if we get another result. We might not. The cube just stopped. So yeah, this is basically how it's done. Uh, I did cut out a few in the middle where I didn't get any results, but if you keep going, you will eventually get results. You see, I didn't do that many before I actually had a result there. <laughs> something, something wasn't right there, was it? From this point on, it just becomes trial and error. Keep tweaking those numbers and keep trying. Eventually, you're going to get more and more consistent results until you find that sweet spot. And then you can just keep going. But then again, even at the sweet spot, you will constantly get crashes. And that's really unavoidable. That just comes with corruptions. But getting at least somewhat consistent results is a very good thing. And this is how you go about corrupting most more modern systems. Corrupting NES games and SNES games are far easier when it comes straight down to it. They don't require anywhere near as much trial and error. Usually a lot of the time it's just turning the intensity down and you'll get some kind of result. Most of what you get here is just crashing. And aside from taking these little steps to help yourself find that sweet spot, there's really not much you can do. Corruptions take quite a lot of trial and error. And unfortunately, this is what you have to go through if you want to do this kind of stuff. But trust me, the results are quite often worth it. Thanks for watching this video guys and have fun corrupting.